to the club. So, as you hopefully know by now, Desmos is our friend. Well, okay, let's be fair about it. I believe Desmos is our friend. You may or may not agree with that. Okay. Uh, when you see a question that involves creating a graph, hopefully you agree that Desmos is our friend. Maybe that's the only thing you ever want to use Desmos for is just creating the graph so that you don't have to create a pencil paper graph, take a picture of it and submit it on Blackboard. All right, that, that's the thought process there, All right? So when I say create graph the function, submitting a Desmos link is just what the doctor ordered, All right? So, oh, that reminds me, I got a flu shot tomorrow. I don't like needles. Nobody, I don't, I don't know too many people who like needles, who like them, but like there are plenty of people who don't mind needles. I mind needles. I'm not a fan. I will try to come up with every excuse possible tomorrow to avoid my flu shot, but ultimately I'll take it and I'll pretend like I'm the toughest guy in the world when I'm doing it. They'll give me the needle. I'll be like, yeah, no big deal. Did it hurt? No, no, no. It's nothing. It's like a little pinch. Uh, it wasn't even a pinch, it was nothing, you know, I'm a tough guy. But inside, I'm like, please don't do that again. Never. So find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of the hyperbola at the point three, negative two, right? That requires us to find a derivative, right? In order to find the derivative, I'm going to rewrite it slightly. One over six x squared minus one over eight y squared is equal to one. Very, very similar in structure to the circle problem that we did last time, all right? Now we talked about this in the sense that there was this whole theoretical concept associated with, yeah, like tattoos, I, like, I, can't even, I can't even like fathom the concept of a tattoo. It's like getting a flu shot for like four hours straight. Like, at least that's what happens in my mind. I, I just can't even think about it. Like, I always I always pretend when people say, oh, are you ever gonna get a tattoo? Oh, no, no, why would I ever wanna put anything on my body? You know, like I, I, I like my pristine skin, blah, blah, blah. In, the, in, in my mind, I'm like, oh, there's a few things that I wouldn't mind getting tattooed, but I can't, I, I can't even conceptualize the idea of having a needle in me for that long. So, yeah. More power to you. Anyway, conceptually, when we take a derivative implicitly, there, there's a lot going on. There's the idea that x can be defined as another function, a function of another variable. Uh, same thing with y. But in terms of a practical approach, what we came up with is take the derivative as you normally would. Just any time you take the derivative involving a y variable, slap on a dy dx. So two times one over six becomes two over six. Two over six simplifies down to one third. X to the first, I'm, I'm not gonna write the, the first, minus two over eight, so one fourth. Y to the first, but here I'm taking the derivative of a y variable. Because I'm doing that, I'm going to slap on a dy dx. Now, the one goes to zero because the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. All right. So, this, and I mentioned this last time, I, that, this, was, this is the topic that, that prompted me to stay for extra help when I was a student. Like, I had to do it. And I was like, I, I don't get it. And what I did, and, and this is kind of what I came up with, and you know, the teacher was trying to get this across to me, like just, just tack on the dy dx until you have that aha moment where it all, all makes sense. You'll start, you know, you'll go through the process, you'll keep tacking on, I don't know why I'm tacking on a dy dx. And then one day, it happens at a different time for everyone. One day you'll be sitting there and be like, oh, that's what he was blabbing on about. Right? And it'll just click. It happens for everyone. It's the weirdest thing. I, I don't describe any other concept this way. 
there's there's I in my experience in all the math courses I teach, there's nothing else where you would have the aha moment like you do with implicit differentiation, where it all just like one day you're just sitting there being like, now I get it. All right. So until that moment happens, every time you take the derivative of a y term, slap on a dy dx. Take the derivative of x terms the way you normally would. All right. Um, and it, you know, it, it might even be after we take the test on this topic where it's like, oh, that would have been nice to know that beforehand. But this will buy you the time to get stuff right until you get the conceptual understanding. All right. Now, what we're going to do is solve for y. I'm sorry, solve for dy dx. So I had the y highlighted so I confused myself. So subtract off the one third x, subtract off a one third x. So one fourth y dy dx. You know, it's really implied multiplication there, but sometimes we just write it adjacent without the multiplication symbol, and that's fine too. All right, I'm going to divide both sides by the negative one fourth. Uh, negative one fourth y, I should say. So boom, boom, a couple of booms. We have dy dx. You could do a little keep change flip here if you want with the with the fractions. It's really up to you because at this point we go uh, in, into substitution mode anyway. So whether you want to go in, um, you know, leave it in this form or, or go into a different form is up to you. Uh, but if you do keep change flip, the two negatives will cancel away. You have four X over three Y. I, either way, and it'll still work out. Yeah. All right, it's asking for the equation of the tangent line at this point. So a little shrinky dink action. So I'd be looking for the derivative of y with respect to x, because I need the slope at three negative two. All right, so dy dx given that vertical I mean given or such that the coordinate is three negative two. All right, that three represents the x value. That negative two represents the y value. So four times three, three times negative two, clean it up, simplify. Doesn't always end up being this nice, but in this case, it's not bad. You get a negative two. So that's our slope, all right? That's the slope of the line tangent to the curve at this particular point. We knew the slope of the line tangent to the curve at any point along the curve was four X over three Y. But now I know at this particular point what the slope is. Right? I also know what a point on the line is. Right? The point slope form. Of a linear function. y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1. The m is the slope. The x1, y1 is the particular point. So I just pop it in. So y equals negative 2 times x minus 3 minus 2. All right. And so what I would do graphically is just plot that line and see if it looks like a tangent at the point three, negative two. So I'll plot three, negative two, just so I have that point that I'm looking for in terms of tangency. Uh, you don't need a label on it. Just having the point there is good enough. Y equals negative two paren X minus three, close it up minus two. We got a line that's going right through that point, And it does appear to be tangent to that point. So that's great, mission accomplished. Let me show you a way that you could have done that without having to do any derivative work really. Um, so 
save. All right. The issue with the approach I'm about to go over is that it only really works because we have an implicitly defined function. Uh, it, it's only gonna work if you solve the equation for y in terms of x, but some equations, you can't do that. So you gotta, you got you have to know implicit differentiation. There's no way around it, but sometimes there's instances where you can kind of, you know, you know, sneakily do the work without having to, um, create the implicit form of the derivative, All right? So let me just show you really quickly. Like it, we, we would actually start off with the same first step. It would be one over six X squared minus one over eight Y squared is equal to one. I would solve this or at least attempt to solve this for Y in terms of X, All right? So I would subtract, I mean, basically I'm swapping the one with the one six x to the second power. So this would become, well, I'm sorry, I'm swapping the, uh, the one with the negative one eighth y to the second, what I meant to say. So adding the one eighth y squared to the right, subtracting a one from the left, the one six x squared minus one is equal to one eighth y squared. Multiply everything by eight. So that's eight six, which would be four thirds. Minus eight is equal to y squared. Now, when I take the square root, I'm gonna get y is equal to plus or minus the square root of all this stuff here. All right, so we would have to put it in explicit form. I'm gonna turn this off real quick, turn this off. Still have my point. Now we have a plus or minus, which means that we could define this function as two separate equations. I only need the relevant piece. So what I would do is I would type in f of x equals radical fraction four thirds x squared minus eight, oops, stay in the radical, minus eight. And you see, if I compare this to the original hyperbola, it's only the top half, I need the bottom half. So out of the plus or minus, it turns out I needed the minus, all right? So I only take the relevant piece to define my function. Right. So then what I would do is figure out what F of three, well, we already know what F of three is, but uh, if I didn't, I would figure that out. But then I'd also figure out F prime of three. And that would give me my derivative at the X value of negative two. I'm sorry, of three, which is negative two. And then using the coordinate, you know, everything else, the point slope form, everything else would be the same. I would be able to come up with my equation, right? So the Desmos work uh, would imply, it would involve you taking your implicit form and making it explicit. But, you know, sometimes it's, it's worth it depending on, um, depending on what you do from there. Because the little bit of algebra we did to get it in explicit form helped us avoid all of the derivative work that we would have had to do, right? As opposed to number four, where it's just flat out saying, you know, equation of tangent line, but well, it's not, maybe it's not flat out saying it, but it, it's implying, yeah, what, what, what he just showed you, you're not gonna be able to do for this one, or at least not easily. You know, you'd have to raise both sides to the three halves power. That's not gonna be pretty. So we we're better off doing this one implicitly. So two thirds, Oops, let me get a thicker marker. X to the negative one third, little power rule, plus two thirds 
y to the negative one third, but because we're taking the derivative of a y uh, variable, I slap on a dy dx. The derivative of five is equal to zero. All right. So then I'm going to solve for dy dx. To do that, I'm going to get rid of the two thirds, x to the negative one third. I'm going to subtract that from both sides. Cancels on the left, it's introduced on the right. All right, and so then I would divide both sides by two thirds. Well, actually, I divide both sides by two thirds and a uh, y to the negative one third. But the two thirds would cancel out. So that would be my derivative. I mean, you can clean it up as much as you want. We have to make a substitution anyway. But if you do clean it up, you can say dy dx is equal to negative x to the negative one third over y to the negative one third. You could also say, because you have negative exponents, you could say negative y to the one third over x to the one third. You could also also say negative the cube root of y over the cube root of x. All right. And just one more also. We can call that, and that's assuming you want to do all this uh, algebra. We could say negative the cube root of y over x as our derivative. So when they say find the equation of the tangent, that actually looks like a coefficient. Let me just put that in there. When they say find the equation of the tangent, we need to find the slope dy dx when the point is 8, 1, x is 8, y is 1, negative the cube root of 8 over 1, I'm sorry, 1 over 8, Cube root of one, one, cube root of eight, two, so negative one half. And so the equation of the tangent line, which would have the form of y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1, would be y equals negative one half x minus eight plus one. All right, so then at this point, I would just check it out on Desmos, make sure. So X raised to the two thirds plus Y raised to the two thirds equals five. Good looking graph right there. Plot eight one point on the graph and then plot my line, the one we just came up with and make sure that it gives us a nice clean tangent. And it sure looks like it does. So I'm pretty confident, I'm pretty comfortable with the final answer. All right, I'm gonna even take this graph and put it in there. Let's kind of pop it in right there. And there we go. All right, so at this point, I will say 
good evening. And um, if you have any questions, stick around. Otherwise, enjoy the remainder of the evening, and I'll see you on uh, Tuesday. So the, I'm letting you go early so that you can get a jump start on those, on those tech assignments.